Hey guys, uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you're doing better than me anyway. I um, tested positive for COVID last night. I don't feel that terrible. I don't really feel good, um, but I don't feel that terrible. The biggest thing is that um, <clears throat> my chest is just tight. Uh, and so I have coughing fits every now and then. So if I cough uh, during this, like I'm trying to suppress a cough right now, uh, I apologize <clears throat> in advance. Uh, I guess I could try to edit it out, but frankly, uh, I'm too lazy. So you'll just have to deal with my coughing. <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about today is uh, over the weekend, I was thinking about uh, this this hack judge in Florida, this Eileen Cannon, um, this Trump appointed district judge who ruled in Trump's favor in his request for a special master to review these uh, documents that he stole, these classified and unclassified documents. And really, uh, to get caught up in whether or not these documents are classified is um, a diversion because it doesn't matter whether they were classified or not. The statutes cited in the application for the search warrant to search Mar-a-Lago uh, were statutes where the classification status of these documents is completely irrelevant. This is not a classified documents case. Now, classified documents uh, were, were involved, but they did not proceed uh, in this search warrant as a classified documents case. This was a, a national defense documents case where the uh, classification is irrelevant. doesn't matter if the documents were classified or not. If Trump took these documents um, as he did, uh, it was illegal whether these documents were classified or not. So Trump getting, you know, trying to muddy the waters by claiming ridiculously, by the way, it's just with, with, without merit whatsoever, that he classified these documents en masse um, is both ridiculous and, and completely irrelevant as a legal matter. Even if that happened, which it clearly did not, uh, even if it did, it doesn't matter. It's still a crime. So anyways, this is who this hack judge is. She issued this ruling, and I don't want to go into the ruling right now. It's not my, that's not the point of my video here, um, but suffice it to say, the ruling um, has no grounding in law. She made up all, all her supposed legal basis, basis for, um, for ruling as she did were completely made up. These were conjured out of whole cloth. She made up uh, principles of law that do not exist. Um, she made them up to protect Trump. And this is what I'm getting at. This is what I was thinking about this weekend. And the question for me is, did she rule? And, and, by, and by the way, I may do a video about the legal aspects of this later. Not my point here in this video. But in the meantime, um, you've probably seen good commentary about uh, the lawlessness of her ruling. Um, there, there has been some good commentary out there from some sources. Glenn Kirshner comes to mind. He's very good on this stuff. Um, anyways, you might want to check out what he said about this. He's, he's dead on the money with respect to how lawless this decision is. But for my purposes here, what I was wondering is, did she rule in this way uh, simply because she is such a profound and complete political hack, just a mindless Trump cultist who got herself appointed to the federal bench, and she will just do anything she can to try to protect her orange god king. Is that what is motivating her? Because the law is, is this was not a legal ruling. You can be the most incompetent lawyer slash judge on planet Earth and and never arrive at the ruling she did. I mean, this this was, like I said, completely made up. She intentionally made up all of this crap in order to protect Donald Trump, period. That's all she did. It's not even a close question. It's not debatable. That's what happened. It's completely made up bullshit. The question is, did she do it because she is such a hack so completely and utterly in the tank for Donald Trump? Or could it be something else? Could it be that she ruled this way out of fear? Could it be that she ruled this way because she is, in fact, 
afraid to rule against Donald Trump because she might be afraid of, of what Trump's lunatic cult might do if she ruled against Trump. And not what they might do in terms of rioting in the street or anything like that, just generally speaking, but specifically what might they do to her or to her family or to her property, her home. That's a question. I, I seriously wonder. Because the, the ruling is so outrageous, and it's it's either one of those two things. She's either completely in the tank, hack trying to protect Trump because she's part of his cult, or could it be that she is legitimately afraid for herself, her personal security, perhaps her life, or that of her children? I don't know if she has kids, but if she does, or any other family members. Could that because this cult, Trump's cult, is a scary, violent group of thugs. They are completely divorced from from reality. These people are dangerous lunatics. She know, anybody knows this. Uh, and to be fearful of what they might do to a judge that rules against their orange god king is a legitimate concern. Could that be what is motivating her here? I don't know. I have I have no reason to believe that other than the general fact that Trump controls a violent and dangerous cult. Um, so that's, that's what made me start wondering this. And maybe perhaps it, 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 um, it's, it's either one of those two things or maybe something else <coughs> that I'm not thinking about, but to me, it, it's gotta be one of those two things. She's a complete hack or she's afraid, or maybe it's a combination of the both, uh, both of those things. Um, as much as I think that that's a legitimate fear that someone might have, that Trump's cult might do something to them or their family or their their property, find out where she lives. I mean, all it takes is one angry tweet from Trump saying that she betrayed him because that's how and, – and here's the thing to keep in mind about cults and betrayal. If this were an Obama-appointed judge and she ruled against Trump, that would be expected. You know, the cult would expect an Obama-appointed judge to rule against Trump. Now, they'd still be angry about it, but they would expect it. But when you expect that someone is on your side, part of the cult, a Trump appointed judge, and she rules against you, and you're a member of that cult, that makes you even more angry because this person was supposed to be on your side and they betrayed you. And people become more angry at those they feel betrayed them than than those who maybe did them wrong, but you know they were never on your side to begin with. So I think they would be they would react more angrily, perhaps more violently uh, against a Trump appointed judge who they feel betrayed them. And and, and all it would take is, is, you know, not that Trump can tweet anymore, but a a statement on his ridiculous failing truth social platform or he goes on Newsmax or Fox News or something and accuses this judge of betrayal and all this stuff. That's all it would take to perhaps unleash this violent, angry mob to to dox this woman, find out where she lives, put it online, call for violence against her. Uh, maybe if she has children, find out where the children go to school, put that on social media as a threat. Um, that would be very, very scary for any any normal, rational person. And that's all it would take. It would be as easy as that. Uh, you know, a simple statement on his stupid platform or a, a, a simple call in to Newsmax and 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 um, make some statements that could rile up his his violent, dangerous cult. Um, so that is a legitimate concern. The reason why I I tend to believe that it's not fear that's motivating her, but rather that she is in fact completely in the tank for Trump is just just a a Trump cultist who managed to get herself appointed to the federal bench. I think it's that. I I, I tend to think it's that more so than the fear. And the reason being is because if she was really afraid, and again, I think fear is legitimate for someone in her position. Um, If she were really afraid, she could have recused herself. She could have she could have come up with some reason to recuse herself, even just as simple as saying, well, 
he appointed me just last year and I don't feel I could be um, objective in ruling on a case in which, which he is, is a party. She could have, you know, as simple as that. Now that's not really a legitimate basis for recusal, but it doesn't matter. These things aren't second guessed. If she recused herself for that reason, it wouldn't have been second guessed. It wouldn't have been, you you can't appeal it. If the judge recuses herself, she recuses herself. That's it. It would go to another um, judge in that district or it would go to another district judge in that circuit or, 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 or something like that. Another uh, judge, maybe a retired judge could have been appointed to oversee the case or something. Um, but a recusal could have been an easy way for her to get out of this without um, putting herself in a position um, where the cult would target her. So that would have been an easy out if fear is what mo- was motivating her. Recusal. The fact that she didn't recuse herself tells me that maybe fear wasn't the thing. Maybe she really is just completely in the tank for Trump. Um, that's sort of where I tend to come down on this, but I would not be surprised if it was fear that was motivating her too. I don't know. We are in dangerous, uncharted territory here. The fact that we're even contemplating this, that that a judge might be ruling in in you know, just setting aside the the clear law here and just making shit up in order to protect a former president because they're afraid of that former president unleashing a violent cult against that person and her family. The fact that this, whether that's what's motivating or not, the very fact that we're even considering this, and obviously it's why would we not consider it given everything we've seen? The fact that we're considering just shows you how far down the path towards, you know, banana republicanism we are. I mean, this country is so effed up right now. Uh, It's almost beyond description what has happened in such a short period of time. We're talking in just like five years, six years, you know, from 2015 till now. That's all it took. It's all it took to turn, you know, this once- rational, even if you disagree with them, political party, the Republican Party, to turn it into a complete, unhinged, violent, lunatic, conspiracy theorist fucking cult. It's just, it, it, it's still, I mean, I understand it all. I've been following this, but it still boggles my mind because we're, we're a mess in this. Sometimes you just got to step out and think about what the hell has happened and what's going on. It's unfreaking believable. It's still hard to wrap your mind around it, even as you know that it's happening. And you're not denying reality. I'm not denying reality, but it's still hard to believe it's actually fucking happening. Anyway, uh, those are my thoughts. Um, I thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. Please. And give it a thumbs up. Uh, we've got we've to gotta juice that algorithm to start pushing out my content. Um, part of my problem here is that when I started this YouTube channel, of, you know, several years ago, um, I was still a Republican and I had a lot of people who ended up losing their fucking minds and becoming Trump cultists who were following this channel and they're still here. And I, I'm trying desperately to get them to stop fucking subscribing to this shit. Get the hell off my channel. Um, anyways, please give this a thumbs up subscribe Um, if you enjoy this content share it with other like-minded people who are not lunatics Um, don't have to agree with me on on all my policies and politics I don't care about that Um, and as a thinking rational serious person yourself I'm sure you don't either we don't need to agree on everything as long as we can deal with friggin reality and recognize the threats to this country, which is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and every other number you fucking can count down that list. The threats are the Republican Party, Donald Trump and his MAGA cult. What we might disagree on politically is so far down the list. uh, 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 Let me try that again. I'm stuttering here. Is so far down the list of things that I think are important as to not even be worth mentioning. Right now, you know, your fucking house is on fire. You deal with putting the fire out. You don't deal with what uh, you're going to make for dinner next week. Okay, let's deal with first things first. And first things first right now 
above and beyond every other thing. I couldn't care less about the issues right now. We can disagree on shit. We can work that out later. Right now, we got to save this country and beat this fucking fascist cult. All right. That's what we need to work on. So any like minded people who stand opposed to this fascist takeover of America, this this, this stand opposed to this MAGA cult, um, please share this content with them. Recommend that they subscribe and watch these videos. Uh, so anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.